I want to take just a little bit of time and discuss the geometry of a table. We know that a regulation pool table is twice as long as it is wide. We know that this corner is a 90 degree corner. Well, there's, there's three angles that are critical to the geometry of a pool table. In addition to the 90 degree corner, you have a line that originates from this point of the pocket to the center, which is a 45 degree line. From the very back of the pocket on this diamond, you have a 30 degree line that extends through the center diamond on the upper rail. And then at this portion of the rail, directly to the first diamond, it sort of skirts right along this point. You have a 15 degree line. Well, all these lines, they come to the middle of the table and Essentially, we're working with two squares on a regulation table. Now, if I take this cue ball and place it on the 45 degree line and shoot straight ahead, that 45 degree line, obviously, it goes straight into that pocket. Now, if I take the cue and reestablish the 30 degree line and place the cue ball on that line, then I have a four-rail four geometric route into that corner, into that 90-degree corner. The 45 line where I shot the cue ball went into that 90-degree corner. So did the 30-degree line. Now, I'm going to take the cue ball and place it directly on this 15-degree line. And I'm going to shoot this ball just right above center with proper speed and there's the two rail route leading once again to the 90 degree corner now when we take 15 and 30 and 45 and add it up we get 90 which is the corner there now if you take a regulation table and you reposition the pockets, then you lose the 45, the 30, and the 15 degree lines to this pocket and to that corner pocket. In fact, you disturb the whole table. If you change the dimensions of the table to something other than 2 by 1, then you're disturbing the 45 degree line, the 30 degree line, and the 15 degree line. Those, those balls are no longer going to route geometrically to that 90 degree corner. So your 15, your 30, your 45 add up to 90, which is that corner. 45, the 30, the 15, all geometrically give you the strongest reference possible for connecting with that pocket. Now, let's talk about center to edge aiming just a little bit. There's two perceptions in center to edge aiming that make every single shot on the table. There's a zillion shots on the table and two perceptions make them all somewhere and most of the time into the pocket that you want. And then you've got the 45 degree perception, which also uh, makes balls into the pockets. So basically, the pockets represent right angles. You've got four right angles here that are obvious. And then if you divide the table into two squares, you have a right angle here, uh, a right angle here, and then two there. So really, there's a total of eight right angles on a regulation table. The perceptions of 15 and 30 when followed by a rotation route to the object ball to right angles just as the uh, I, I, for lack of a better word at this point the traditional perception of just just a 15 degree line 
uh, a 30 degree line, a, a, a 45 degree line. They all route to that corner. So the perceptions of center to edge aiming and the geometry of the table is tied together. If you, if you change the table, CTE Pro 1 doesn't work. If you change the perceptions, CTE Pro 1 doesn't work. Now, I know that this is a 15 degree line right here that represents the two rail kick, or we could say a two rail bank. Well, let's say this ball is not on that line. I'm going to move it three or four inches over this way and just put the cue ball here. I can take, in center to edge aiming, the 15 degree perception with an outside rotation and connect with the bank. I, I don't have to know anything about this 15 degree angle. I don't have to reference it. I don't have to be knowledgeable that it's even there. So I could look at 15, the 15 degree perception and outside rotation and I'm dead on my two rail bank for that pocket. Of course, I have to control speed and spin. It wouldn't matter if I took this ball and put it on this side of the line and put the cue ball here. wouldn't matter. 15 degree perception, outside sweep. I'm on, the, I'm on the perfect angle for shooting the two rail bank. I just have to control speed and spin. So the 15 degree perception connects with that 90 degree corner. Now, I know that this is a 30 degree line. This cue ball is on that 30 degree line. Let's say that I take this ball and I move it three or four inches this way. I take this ball and move it this way too. There's two ways to connect with that right angle corner. I could do a 15 degree perception with an inside sweep. I'm set up perfectly. Or I could do a 30 degree perception with an outside sweep and once again I'm set up perfectly. It wouldn't matter if I move this ball over here. Move this ball here. 15 degree perception, inside sweep, there's my four rail bank. 30 degree perception, outside sweep, there's my four rail bank. Center to edge aiming, the perceptions of 15 and 30 when followed by the proper rotation connect you with the right angles of a regulation table. The right angles are specifically placed for a reason. Now, I'm just going to randomly place some balls on the table. And discuss this layout. In relation, in relation to uh, this cue ball here. Let's say I want to shoot the eight ball in the corner. 15 degree perception, outside sweep makes the eight in the corner. If I wanted to make the two ball on the side, 30 degree perception, inside sweep. If I wanted to make the pink four in the corner, 30 degree perception, inside sweep. If I wanted to make the 9 in the corner, 15 degree perception, outside sweep. If I wanted to cut the 1 in the corner, 15 degree perception, inside sweep. All of these sweeps are equal to a half tip pivot. 6 ball, 15 degree perception, inside sweep. Um, 12 ball, 30 degree perception, inside sweep as a cut to that 90 degree corner. Um, the 15 ball into that side, 45 degree perception, outside sweep. Well, I did say that all balls go center to edge. 
Well, this one just happens to be a 45 and an outside, but it does go center to edge if I use a 30 degree perception for the bank back under me. 30 degree perception, inside sweep, I have a one rail bank right here. Cross corner with the 14, 15 degree perception, outside sweep. Cut to the corner, 45 degree perception, outside sweep. Uh, seven ball, cross corner, 15 degree, per 15 degree perception, outside sweep. 13 is a bank cross corner, 15 degree perception, inside sweep. If I wanted a two rail bank cross corner with the 13 ball, 30 degree perception, inside sweep. Five ball, 15 degree perception, outside sweep. <clears throat> Three ball down in the corner would be a 45 degree perception, inside sweep. 11 ball, 15 degree perception, inside sweep. The 10 ball was a bank cross corner, 15 degree perception, inside sweep. If I wanted to cut this ball in the corner, that would be a 60 degree perception, which is actually uh, the 8th ball overlap adjustment with an outside sweep. If I wanted to play the ball back under me as a bank, it would be a 30 degree perception with an inside sweep. How Hool said in his document that a cue ball object ball relationship can always be 15, 30, or 45. That's true. People are beginning to see this now around the world. They're seeing it uh, in, in, in a different perspective. Edge to A, edge to B, edge to C. Well, the edge to A, edge to B, edge to C, really what you're doing is you're just transferring the A, B, C essentially to a 15, 30, or 45 degree perception. So, once again, CTE works because of the geometry of a regulation table. There are unique perceptions that can be described very logically as a 15, 30, and 45 degree perception that connect with the right angles of a regulation table.